very familiar verse of scripture this morning, and I was uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, in the song service this morning how many of the songs went along with uh, the message this morning, uh, and it's interesting too because they, nobody had any uh, a copy of my sermon or anything until after I got to church here this morning because my internet is down. And uh, so uh, I called them and they said that their whole system was down, I guess, in this area. How about you, Sister Sharon? Mine's up. Yours is up. Well, it must. I be. have spec charter spectrum, though. What do you have? That same thing. Really? Yeah. Well, sure. yeah, because you just used it to order the tripod, didn't you, Betty? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, uh, mm -hmm. I called them and they said that it was down and their technicians was working on it. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, maybe this. Maybe some my, areas or something. Or yeah. Something. I'm not sure where their system, how it's like. You know, if it was electrical, uh, you could, you could uh, uh, if you was working in the area, you'd know which uh, circuits goes where. and. And you could figure out what areas would be out, but I don't know anything about Spectrum and where their different uh, systems are. So let's stand this morning as we read the text. I'm going to speak this morning on Look on Me. John 14 and, and verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Lord, we're thankful for your word this morning, thankful for each one that's here, and we just ask that you would bless the remainder of the service. Lord, let this message be a blessing, let it be a strength and a help to each and every one that hears these words. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated if you wish. And I'm just thinking about uh, this uh, situation and uh, there's a lot that can be said for this, and uh, well, I had to do a lot of typing to get this together since uh, I didn't have my Bible program. Uh, and uh, but I did have some that I could bring forward from other sermons, so uh, that helped that I could still do that with my computer. <laughs> so my my word program and my documents and sermons on my computer is is not uh, dependent upon the internet so that's uh, that's a good thing but I, I got to thinking about this and I, I just got to thinking about uh, you know all the things that's taking place in the world today and and uh, how people are a lot of people is uh, is going to be hurting in the in the near future. In fact, it's already started, and a lot of things coming our way. And you know, when you look down through history, people has faced a lot of things. And I think Christians has the the uh, the edge on things because we have a help that we can go to that non Christians don't have. And so I. I want to read some scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 27. Uh, I hope I got this right. This is what I typed. And so I'm not a typist by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I just use two or three fingers. That's all I use. And, and, uh, and I have to look at the keyboard. Uh, I guess I should have at one time or another have taken a uh, typing class, but as I was in school, I wasn't interested in that sort of thing, <laughs> and so uh, couldn't see much sense in that. But we didn't know how the world was going to develop that back in those days, and uh, nowadays it's almost essential to know how to type, isn't it? You pretty much has to, and, and jobs require it, and uh, how to type and how to use the internet and and all that, and that wasn't, uh, that wasn't uh, something that was uh, needed at all back uh, when I was in school. But in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13, Jesus was talking here and he said, Enter 
Ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate that, and, uh, and I typed that wrong apparently. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way uh, that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few uh, there be that find it. And as I read this, I was thinking one time I, I visited a church in San Bernardino, went over there, and they was in revival meetings, the reason I went over, and come into the, the foyer uh, when you entered the church, uh, they had a big, uh, uh, oh, I don't know what you'd call it, a, uh, what do you call it, a big piece of paper with something on it, anyway. Uh, poster? Poster, I guess you'd call it. And here they showed people uh, going, and here's a whole bunch of people going down this road, and over here there's just a few, and these few, they're leading, and it goes, and and there's a kind of a road that goes up into heaven, and the one on, on the other side of all these people was, when they got to a certain place, they was falling off the end of a cliff. And I always remember that, and, and how that is. And I, I just, uh, uh, I think it's such a wonderful thing, being a Christian, that uh, we have the satisfaction of knowing that we're secure, and it doesn't matter what the circumstances are around us. It doesn't matter what's happening. Uh, we can always depend on the Lord, and He will take care of us. And, and I find that the more involved and the more dedicated we are to the things of the Lord, the better our lives are and the better He takes care of us. It's just such a, a great thing. And so He said to enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Uh, and uh, uh, another thing I've thought about is the, the uh, uh, heard the story about an, an eagle that uh, caught a fish, and uh, it was cold weather, and, and uh, there was a river there, and there was ice on the river, and this, this eagle caught this fish, and and to, to keep it, other animals from taking it away from her, she, she went, picked up the fish and she flew over and she landed on, there was a chunk of ice that was floating down the river. So she was standing on that chunk of ice and eating that fish. And her plans was down the river, there was, uh, the river went over a fall. And uh, so she was eating this fish and her plans was when she got to the river that uh, before the chunk of ice she was standing on fell over the over the falls that she would just simply fly away. Sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? And so, but when she got down there and she got right to the falls and come, she figured it was time to fly away. She started to fly away only to find out that her feet had froze to that chunk of ice and it took her over the fall. Well, I think it's that way a whole lot with uh, people that uh, they just live for, for, for this life and they have all their trust and all their hope in the things of this world and, and in their money and in the, the, uh, the positions that they have in life and those things and they don't know that that, that fall, the waterfall is ahead and they're not going to be able to just uh, change the direction. I've heard about people that intended to, to uh, give their life to the Lord just before they die so that they could enjoy the pleasures of this world and get the best of both things. Well, you know what? It, it doesn't work out that way. Uh, you, you, you can't just play games with God like that and... and uh, and just work things around for your own benefit. And so uh, it's, uh, so said we are to uh, enter into that straight gate and, uh, and because, of, because the straight is the gate, narrow is the way 
that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And then in verse 15, the, the, Jesus said here, he said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. And so as we look at that verse of Scripture, I'll tell you something we need to be very careful of. We need to be very careful that we're not deceived about the things that, uh, that we hear round about us and some of the teachings and, uh, and whatever that there, that there is. And I know that uh, in Christianity there is what I have labeled uh, traditional Christianity. And most of it that is, is false, a big part of, of traditional Christianity is really not in harmony with the Word of God. But here's a, the, the, the thing about that is people that is taught and live their lives depending on traditional Christianity uh, it, it's, a, it's a good thing that most of that is not going to keep them out of heaven. That's, that's the wonderful thing about it. And most of the people that follow <coughs> after that teaching and that uh, travels that road, most of them really love the Lord and is really doing their best to serve the Lord and, and live a good righteous life. And there's just been so much uh, sense across, if you look back in history, and you see so much that has happened in, to Christianity, how it has been uh, taken into false teachings and, and so forth, especially just before the, the, uh, the, the Great Reformation uh, and so forth. And Christian teachings has been changed and down through, the, 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 through time and so forth. And so we need to be... But what we need to be aware of is a false prophet that will lead you away from the Lord and will teach you things that will interfere with your walk with the Lord and, and, uh, and so forth. And I, there's a scripture that uh, it, uh, uh, let's see, where was that scripture? Uh, let's see. Uh, Well, it's, I, I, I guess I better just follow my notes. <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, when we look at some of the things that's going on in, in what is accepted as Christianity, you'll find that there's a lot of things that really has much meaning. You know what I think has happened in, in, a, in a, a lot of times, and it's kind of sad, I think that uh, there's, there's churches and the groups of Christian people that uh, they go to churches where there's no real spirit of the Lord and they've kind of lost their love for prayer and for uh, reading the Word of God and so forth. And so they have uh, started practicing rituals in order that the church could have something that's attractive, something that attracts people. I, I recall a conversation that that uh, I, I wasn't involved with it very much when I was working for the city of Riverside and on the crew I was on and there was a, a young man there about my age uh, probably a little bit younger than me and uh, his, uh, he was raised in a Mormon family his dad also worked for the, for the city of Riverside in a different department and he was a very devout Mormon, but Ralph wasn't. And as soon as he became a, uh, an adult, he, he walked away from all of that. And so the subject of religion came up on the crew and, and uh, they talking about, the guys was talking about different churches and Ralph made the statement. He said, you know, he said, if I decided to go to church, uh, he said, I would go to the Catholic church. And someone said, Ralph, why would you choose the Catholic Church? And he said, well, he said, you go to the Catholic Church and they have all this stuff that, that they go through and all these, this fancy stuff in the church. And he said, that's impressive to me. And he said, I would go there to, to just be part of all of that because he said, that's an impressive way uh, to, to practice religion. 
Well, of course, he had no concept of the idea of what Christianity is really about because Christianity is about your relationship with God, right? And, uh, and But these rituals and a lot of these ideas and things that goes on is something to keep the people's interest and so forth instead of to direct people towards the Lord. And that's pretty sad and that's false prophets and, and especially things that looks good and, and feels good and, and, and all. Uh, it's not always that of the Lord. And so we need to be careful about that. So be, be, uh, beware of false prophets which comes to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. And so this speaks about some that is, that is purposely deceiving you and destroying uh, people that listen to them. You know not, uh, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? And I, I like that, that scripture really well. Uh, we have a lot of criteria today that people talks about and, uh, and they, they, they proclaim this is the truth, that's the truth, and this is what you got to do to be saved and something else. And I recall when I got saved, it was a real popular thing in, in Christianity amongst Christians. If you talk to Christians, it was a real popular thing for people to, to make statements like, uh, oh, you know, uh, I, when you get saved, you need to find which church is God's church. And they would speak about certain denominational churches. And some would say, well, it, it's Baptists. And others would say, oh, it's Assembly of God churches. And uh, someone else say it's Lutheran. And they, and they would have, then that, that's God's church. And there is a, a, a Christian denomination that declares that they are, their organization is God's church and that uh, to, uh, to, I don't know if they go so far as to say you won't be saved if you don't belong to them or, or what, but they sure go to lengths to, to prove to you that they are God's church and God's only church and and they say that that water baptism, just for an example, is not valid unless you're baptized by one of their ordained ministers. And uh, it's uh, and there's nothing in the Bible that that even says baptism has to be administered by a preacher. There's no scripture for that. Any Christian can baptize a new believer. And I recall back in looking at some of the history of Calvary Chapel, when Chuck Smith went down to uh, Redondo Beach, I believe it was, and started the Calvary Chapel movement, that he went down there and they had so many people that was coming to the Lord, mostly hippies. This was back in the flower age of the 60s, the 1960s, and they had so many of those young people coming to the Lord that uh, Chuck Smith would... Uh, would announce a water baptism and all those kids that got saved they they wanted to get baptized and they'd walk out into the ocean out in the pacific ocean and they picked a spot where they knew that it was a good place to do this and they would have christians just uh, everybody that was a christian just to take a new believer and take them with you and baptize them well they would baptize them and then they'd say okay uh, there's a whole bunch more needs to be baptized. They'd have them go in the water. And the people that just got baptized would baptize somebody else, new Christians. And he was baptizing those people. He, uh, within a period of, I think it was five or six years, something like that, his church grew to 25,000 people. And there was almost 100 new churches started from that movement at the same time. Uh, that was one of the great... Uh, uh, the, the great outpourings of the Spirit of the Lord that happened. And so uh, you cannot put God in a box and say, we have him here, you got to come over here where we're at to have him. You can't do that in Christianity. And so we need to be very careful. And uh, the way we identify people is how. It says, you shall know them by their fruits. 
That's how you know. Our people, uh, do they have this where Jesus made the statement, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you have love one to another. And there is nothing in the scripture that says, uh, by this shall uh, you know who's a Christian because of their doctrinal stand, because of what their creed says. There's nothing in the Bible that, that says that, and yet that was taught, and it was taught very aggressively uh, along the period of time when I got saved. And I used to hear a lot of that sort of thing, and, and of course the church I went to, there's even some of the young people in there that would make the statement, well, we know that we're God's church because uh, this and that and the other thing. And I used to think, well, I don't know. Uh, I, I believe this is God's church, but I don't believe it's the only one. And right away, I just, just could not accept that idea of some denomination being God's uh, church and God's only church. So it says, uh, it says, even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. I missed that. Every tree that bringeth uh, not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. And it's a, uh, it's a fact that it's the fruits that we have. And I'll tell you what, I, I think it's a wonderful thing just to know people, to know Christians and so forth that, uh, that has love one for another and, and, uh, and, and they have the fruits of their, they uh, exhibit the fruits of the Spirit in their life. And it's something that's wonderful and something that, that we need and we need to embrace and fellowship people even though their doctrine may be different, and I believe in doctrine, and I think that we all need to follow doctrine as close as we can, but we, know we should never get to the place where we insist that other people follow the same doctrine that we do. Uh, I recall one time there was a situation come up at a fellowship meeting, and, and uh, one preacher preached something, and another one got up behind him, contradicted him and, and boy when he got through I remember Coy Black he got up and and uh, he got that and uh, the way our fellowship meetings worked most of the time is they just opened the service up for preaching and and any preacher could just come on up and preach and and they was without being called on and and so preachers would and we had really good services uh, and so after that second minister got done preaching, Brother Black got up and he just got up to the pulpit and he opened up his Bible and he looked in his Bible and he's, where's my glasses? I can't see that scripture without my glasses. And so he turned around to one of the preachers. He said, Brother, you wear glasses. Let me try your glasses. And so the guy handed him his glasses and Brother Black put them on and he said, you know what? I said, that." That, that, that doesn't look right and hand the back. He said, how about and to another minister and he got three or four pair of glasses and he tried them on. He said, you know what? He said, when we look at the word, he said, uh, and then he pulled his own glasses out and he said, when we look at the word, he said, we don't always agree and it's just like looking through these different glasses. He said, uh, everybody has their own prescription and, and they see things differently and he said, I think we need to be uh, a little, uh, what's the word he uses, a little charitable or something like that and, and, uh, uh, and so forth. So he's, he, uh, but he made a good point and I, I'll never forget Brother Black doing that. He, he, was, uh, uh, he was an interesting uh, guy. So, but uh, we find that the word is, is some, uh, sometimes the word is, is uh, uh, is, is written in parables and sometimes in symbolic language and, and sometimes it's literal. In fact, the big part of it is literal. And uh, so uh, uh, when we 
look at it. Someone may look at one scripture and they may say that scripture is, is symbolic and somebody else may say, no, that's literal. And so, well, that's up to each individual. But you know, in the, in the midst of all of this, the fact is that we cannot uh, uh, require people to be on the same page with us. We have to be charitable and, and we have to walk together and, and, and honor one, one another. Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree, I read that. Uh, Wherefore, by their fruit shall shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Uh, so, uh, another scripture. There's another scripture where Jesus was talking about a farmer. And he, this farmer had two sons. And he said unto the one son, he said, I need you to go out and work in the field today. And the son said, no, dad, I'm not going to go out there. So he turned to his other son and he said, son, I want you to go out and work in the field today. And he said, the second son said, okay. He said, I'll go out and work in the field. Uh, but he didn't go out there. But the first son, I just got to thinking about it. And he said he wasn't going to go out the field, but he went out in the field and started working. And Jesus said, which one of these two did, the, did the, his father's will? And, of course, the answer was the one that went out in the field, not the one that said he was going to go. So we can't, it's not about words we say. It's about our actions, and it's about the things. Uh, how many have heard the, the, the phrase that... Uh, Let's see, how does that go? It said that he, he's, he's, his actions speak so loud I can't hear a word that he says. And so uh, when people, when a church is just promoting love and, and, and the will of the Lord and, and, uh, uh, and those things is the ones that we need to follow. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, uh, or ye that work uh, iniquity. And so as we look at this, uh, at this scripture, we find that uh, there's a lot of people today, and I, and I recall that something else that has really changed. Uh, from when I first got saved around that period of time. We used to see a lot of ministers that was come around and they'd talk about uh, how much power of God they had in their life and how many people got saved when they had a meeting and, and so many people got the Holy Ghost and they cast out devils and they did this and they did that. Uh, you know what? Even when I was a new Christian, I wasn't impressed very much by that. Uh, I like to go and, and see the power of God. It's wonderful to see somebody actually healed and so forth. But it's amazing at how much of that really wasn't of God that took place. I, I recall uh, hearing about uh, Oral Roberts, and he was asked the question one time. He said, Brother Roberts, he said, You're a, a, he, you have a healing ministry. He said, how many people would you say... It gets actually gets healed in your ministry. And he said, well, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, I, as near as I can tell, he said, of course, I don't know what's happening with all the people I pray for, but he says, as near as I can tell, there's about 3% of them that gets healed that I, that I pray for. And he was known as a lot of people thought everybody he laid his hands on got healed and, and, uh, and so forth. And so... Uh, it's it's just something now that doesn't make raw uh, raw Oral. Oral Roberts uh, that doesn't make him a bad guy or a false prophet he was doing the will of the Lord and it's up to God who he heals it's not up to us and so uh, we need to always remember that I want to read some scripture in Romans chapter 10 verses 1 through 3 
Uh, and here's what it says. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and pray to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They were very religious people, but not according to Scripture. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now that's an interesting scripture. Uh, they went about to establish their own righteousness. And I'll tell you what, I've seen this, and I'm sure a lot of you have, where they, they, people make their own rules and, and they require their, their people, their followers, to live by those rules and so forth. And I, I've said this about some of that, that goes on that they, uh, many of those, they was requiring things of their people that God didn't require. And I think that's something we need to be very careful of and look at the, at the things of the Lord and God's way. In James chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, it says here, uh, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Now remember when, when we read that scripture, that's not talking about the whole community uh, and so forth. You know who he was talking to? James was talking to the church. So apparently there was fightings and wars amongst the Christian people that, that James was, was writing to. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. Selfishness is what James is, is dealing with here. I love the book of James. James deals uh, so well with just practical living and so forth. Of course, the Apostle Paul uh, really excelled in that area also. And so we find that James was talking about this. And he said, You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. And so we look at this, uh, uh, at this scripture and, and we can see that it's not about ourselves. It's not about what we want and what we desire, what we think is right. But it's about other people. And, and I recall the, uh, forget the name of the fellow that started the Salvation Army. And uh, they, uh, they was having a, a, uh, their annual conference and there was hundreds of people there at this conference and, and the owner, the, the founder of the movement, uh, was it Moody, I forget, but I forget who, who it was. Anyway, uh, he was very sick and so someone came to him and said, brother, are you gonna be able to make it to the, to the conference? And he said, no. He said, I don't think I can even get out of bed. He said, I'm not doing good at all. And so the, uh, the minister talking to him said, well, brother, he said, then let me ask you, said, uh, uh, what shall, do you have a message that you would like us to, like for me to convey at the conference for you when I get to the, the uh, conference and the, this founder of that great movement, he, 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 he gave one word. You know what that word was? Others. That's all he said is others. And he died shortly after that. And, uh, and that's what his life was about. And, and when he put together the Salvation Army. And they do a lot of good for a lot of people. And uh, I... Uh, okay. Let's see, what else have I got here? Uh, Well, let's continue in James. He that giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, 
Resist the devil and he will flee, flee from you. The devil will speak to God's people. Someone in church, someone said right one time, said, you know, I come to the Lord. I don't have to deal with that old guy anymore uh, and so forth. But uh, you know what? We all have to deal with the devil. We all have to. He'll tempt us and he'll, he knows our weak points. He knows what, what uh, the things that we like, what's appealing to us. And he'll use those things. And as soon as we see that ourself thinking about things that's not of God, then we need to begin to think of something else. And that's the way you resist the, the devil. And if you resist him, he will flee from you. And so we need to do that. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, uh, and purify your hearts. Uh, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. Uh, so uh, it goes on in the last verse on, in James that I'm reading. Uh, it says to humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord uh, and he shall lift you up. And so we need to submit ourselves unto God Stay true to the Lord and really speak unto God. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, this is a very uh, interesting things we need to uh, look on me. I recall the words of, uh, I believe it was Peter and John, wasn't it, that went into the temple in third chapter of Acts and, and uh, uh, he, they, they prayed for the man that was lame and there that was begging for a living and uh, when they looked to to Peter and John's and, and uh, expected to seem to receive some money and so forth and uh, he, what was the words that they spoke to him they said look on us silver and gold have we none but such as we have we'll give unto you and so they they got the man by the hand and said in the name of the Lord Arise and God healed the man and and boy it, uh, did that get some attention there in the temple because everybody knew that man and they knew this was not a phony deal when he began to dance around and and walk and dance in the spirit and so forth. Uh, so uh, as we look at this, uh, I think this morning we need to simply look on Jesus and. And we can look at everything that's going on around about us uh, and all these different things. And we need to just uh, focus our minds on the Lord and, and, and put our trust in Him. And don't let these things that's going on affect you and affect your spirit and, and get you depressed or get you all uh, angry and all of those things. That's not Christ-like Christ in the midst of all the things that was going on during the time of Jesus and his personal ministry. He faced a lot of different things in his life. And the only time that, that, that the Bible records that he did anything that resembles anger is when he went and cleansed the temple and got that whip and, and run those money changers and people out of the temple. And that's the only time that, that I can think of in Scripture where Jesus became angry. But he became angry with the, and somebody might, might say that was righteous indignation. Well, I think that would be probably proper to say that. But uh, it was interesting that he, uh, that, that Jesus looked and at, the, uh, at the things going around him, uh, going on around, and he looked at the political scene and other scenes, and he just went ahead and done his ministry in the midst of all of that. And you know what, saints? We are, are a chosen few of uh, people. The Bible says that, we are, that, God's, that we're God's chosen people. The church is. We're God's chosen people. And so we need to recognize that and put our trust and our hope in the Lord and just look unto Him. And so this morning, let's, uh, let's be sure and spend our time in, in prayer time and remember that this coming week and just uh, 
Uh, just pray and look to the Lord and enjoy your relationship with God, saints. Enjoy your relationship with God. That's what you need to do. And that will give you victory by having a victory in the Lord. And, and you can look at those around about you that's, uh, that's upset and doing all kinds of crazy things and whatever. And you can look at those people and, uh, and, and you, can, you can feel sorry for them, knowing that your hope is in the Lord and you know that he's in control. And no matter what happens out there, you're still secure with the Lord. And so this morning, uh, look on me. That's the one of my thought this morning. So just look on Him and don't let, don't be persuaded or or uh, derailed by the things that's going on and all the things that would take your attention away from the Lord. So with that, let us stand this morning.